One of the most important pieces of information that you provide with an HTTP request, particularly with a GET request, is this path. So if you look in the actual GET request, the server name is sort of you know gone at that point, and what I'm passing to the server is whatever's sort of to the right of the server name. So experiment.nanoclass.org slash path to foo.html. Now the semantics of how servers handle paths are pretty interesting, and they've changed quite a bit since the web, uh, sort of the early days of the web. So in the early days of the web, well, what would happen is if I requested this document, path to foo.html, normally what this would refer to is some file located somewhere on the web server. Now, the file could be um, at the location in the directory path, subdirectory two, um, and the file could be called foo.html. Uh, but what's more common, and this is sort of static files, if I'm serving static files, and again, this is what early web servers were doing, but what's more common is that the web server combines this path with some other directory. So it might append, you know, home, yeah, see if I can write today, home, Greg, dub, 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 path to foo.html. And the idea is if this file exists, then the file is what's returned in the body of the get request. If the file doesn't exist, then I get some sort of 404 error. That was it. So you know you can think of in the early days of the web and on static servers, when you request path to foo.html, you're getting a file called foo.html from some directory located somewhere on the web server. Um, you know if you request path to without a file name, typically what happens is the server appends index dot html and then looks for the same thing so it would look up here path to index.html path to home greg www path to index.html whatever so this is how paths were used in the early days of the web and there was this very direct mapping between the path name and a file name now, however, the semantics of paths are totally different and completely up to the web server. So this is sort of the static uh, days. And now on the dynamic web, when I'm serving dynamic uh, sites, right? think about Google. So when you make a Google search, Google doesn't have search results for every possible query that you could issue just sitting there in some directory. That's not how Google works. Google is generating those results based on the query. And so there is no file sitting there with this name. Instead, what the server does is it does work to compute a response and then return it to you. And so the semantics of this path are totally different. And really what you can think about this on dynamic sites is you can think about it as making a function call to some function on the site and the path gets converted in some way to the arguments to that function. So for example, I could have a function called page that takes the path that was pathed in. So this would get an argument path to index.html in this case. And its job would be to return some HTML document. And it could just build it on the fly, right? There's no need for there to be a file sitting there that it's using. It just generates HTML. Um, that same function could also take any combination of the you know, permutations of this. So maybe it takes one argument, which is path, a second argument, which is two, and the third argument, which is index.html. The way that these paths get converted to actual function calls on the server is totally up to the, the web server code and the dynamic code that's running on the website. So this is kind of interesting, right? I mean, again, in the old days of the web, we had static files. This was a file name. In the new web, in the dynamic web, this is a function call in some way. And the way that the path is split up and converted into arguments into that function is really entirely up to the web server. So big difference between the old web um, and the new web.